Hello, today we're taking a look at Leon Lee's 8.inch universal screen. It's available from today in both black and white and has an MSRP of just under 85 US dollars. So this is an IPS LCD screen. It has a resolution of 1920 by 480, a refresh rate of 60 hertz, and will reach a peak brightness of 500 nits. So if I just tilt our screen slightly, you'll see that we've got an RGB lighting strip and it goes all the way around the screen. And if we turn our screen around, you can see where we're going to be connecting it up to our PC. We've got one connector on the short side and one connector on the long side. And you can use either of these to connect it up to your PC. And one of the nice things about this screen is there's no HDMI cables to plug into your graphics card. You're going to use this cable here, which plugs into a USB 2.0 header on your motherboard. So all we need to do is, depending on the orientation that we're going to use, decide which of the ports we want to line the cable up with. And then we can go ahead and push the cable into place. And then all we're going to have to do is plug this into a USB 2.0 header on our motherboard. So say you're short of USB 2.0 headers on your motherboard, or actually you're wanting to mount this outside your case and you'd rather mount it to the back of the motherboard, this is possible. So Leon Lee include this little optional cable. So all we're going to want to do is take this USB cable, push it into place, and then we've got a standard USB type A connector on the back and this will plug into the back of your motherboard. So there's a whole variety of different mounting methods for securing this. So in the case we do get this double sided adhesive so you can simply stick these to the back of the screen and then position this anywhere in the case that you want. The other option that we have is to use this little bracket to mount it to fans in our case and these two cutouts are designed to be mounted to 120 millimeter fans. Turning the bracket round, we've got this little plate and it's going to go onto the back of your screen. In terms of securing the bracket to your screen, there's three different positions. So you can, of course, install it in the centre or at either side. And we're going to use four of these short screws to secure the bracket to the screen. And Lee and Lee do include the screwdriver you're going to need to secure things into place. So as I mentioned, this bracket can be installed at either side of the screen if you prefer. And there's loads of customization in terms of the position. So we can slide this bracket all the way up or all the way down to get it in the exact position that you're going to want the screen in place. And as well as this bracket sliding, the bracket at the bottom will also push up and down on the screen itself. So you are able to adjust its position on the fans as well. And there's also rotation, so we can, with the bracket in position, we can rotate the screen all the way around. So you're going to be able to get it into whatever position you want to have it in. So another really cool option is you're going to have the ability to rotate the screen. So you can imagine having this on the side of the case, a case with glass on the front and on the side. And if you didn't want it facing the side panel, you could rotate it around slightly, having it facing the front and the side, or I could have it turned all the way around so the screen was facing the front of the case. And another option that you have is to simply use the bracket as a stand for the screen. So you can move this about to anywhere you want on the case and just simply set it down. Again, loads of options in terms of tilting the screen. And it's just going to simply sit in at the bottom of the case wherever you want it. So what if the case you're using has 140mm rather than 120mm fans? Well, that's no problem because Lee and Lee include this bracket. So we'll take a look at one side of the bracket. You'll notice we've got two screws on each side. So the bracket's going to simply slot into place. And then we're going to use four of these longer short screws to secure the brackets together. So you can see that's now going to give us the option to mount to 140 millimeter fans. So what I want to do now is show you some mounting options for a case, starting off with mounting it outside the case to your back fan. So you're going to use the original fan screws. So I'm just going to remove the bottom two screws and then we'll line the bracket up with the back of the case and we're going to screw through the bracket, through the case and into our fans. So we do have quite a bit of adjustment. In terms of fine height adjustment, I haven't put the screws in all the way tight. So you see I can push them all the way down to the bottom or pull them all the way up to the top. So height adjustment of the screen, we've got three different positions that we can install in, but there's also a bit of height adjustment on the bracket as well. We can also have the screen pulled out from the case or pushed in. So we get it just where we want it. And then taking a look in from the other side, you're gonna have quite a bit of tilt adjustment as well. So you can have the screen positioned in exactly what position you want. And again, further away from the case, are right up against the case. So one thing you're going to have to factor in when attaching your bracket to the screen is what side do you want these connectors coming out. So you'll see I've purposely had them coming out this side because we're going to be plugging into a port in the back of our motherboard. Whereas if they came out this side up here, we'd have the cable stretching across, which wouldn't look quite so good. So all I need to do is plug the USB cable into the screen. 
and then we'll plug that into a USB port on our motherboard and all you'd need is a little bit of a cable tie to tidy that up. So what about inside the case? We can simply line our screen up with where we want it inside the case and again just take care to fix the bracket to where you want to secure it and again you can secure it to any of these fan screws here and Lee and Lee include some fan screws with the screen. And this time you'll notice I'm not using the USB type A adapter. I've installed the cable to this side where I'm just going to pass it through the rubber grommet to the back. I'm going to bring the cable back through the bottom and plug it into one of the USB 2.0 headers at the bottom of the motherboard. So again with this screen we've got obviously loads of adjustment. So if we want to slide it all the way towards the front, we can do that so it's not blocking our fans. We can simply tilt the screen out. So you can have it facing the front and the side. Or if you prefer, you can continue to rotate all the way around and have the screen facing the front of the case. We can have the screen at the bottom secure to our bottom fans, although to mount it you are going to need to remove your GPU. And I would take a look in from the side, you'll see it's just a simple matter of using the included fan screws to secure the bracket to the case. Another option would be to secure it to the top of the case. All you'd have to do is remove your radiator screws from the I.O., pop them through the bracket and secure it into place here. Again, you've got the tilting options. So first thing to do is download Lee and Lee's L Connect 3. You'll find a link to it in the description. So we're going to go ahead and click on download and then we'll click on the download button. After the file downloads, we can double click on it to install it. Click on yes and next install. We can then go ahead and open L Connect 3. So in L Connect 3, we're going to see our universal screen. So we can go ahead and click on it and we're able to select our layout. So I've got a set to portrait, so I'll select portrait. So you see here we can click on the outside to set our lighting effect up or click on the screen to set our screen up. So I'm going to go with the lighting effects first, so we'll click here. And at the moment it's set to rainbow and I would like it to be a static white to match the rest of the setup. So we just go down to here, we're going to click static color. We'll click here, get white and paint white on here and click on apply. And you'll see now that the energy beta lighting bar around the screen has changed to white. And obviously there's further adjustments here in terms of speed and brightness. So we want to set our screen up again. We can click the screen or click the button over here. Let's just click on the screen. And we've got a range of custom designs. So let's show you what some of these look like. So we'll just click on the first one here and click on apply. Okay, so I'll show you a few more of these. We can click on the next one, click on apply. So if you don't want to use one of Leanne Lee's own templates, you can use a custom theme. So you can head over here and we can upload an image or video to have as our background. We can then go into our theme info and we can choose what we actually want to appear on the screen. And we can head over to the modular option to make up our own screen. I think I'm quite happy with the custom ones, but if you want to do that, there's loads of options that you've got here and over an additional information, you've got a few more options. So you can have it as a clock in offline mode, or you can have it as a secondary screen by turning either of these options on. Mm -hmm. 